Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're looking at NVIDIA's new GTX 950 video card. With me here I have the ASUS Strix model of the GTX 950, part of their Strix lineup. And this video card is brand new, it launches at an interesting price point of $160, which I'll discuss why that's interesting in a moment. And in terms of specs, you're going to be pretty familiar with most of it because it is the GM206 GPU. So that's got two GPU clusters, six streaming multiprocessors, 768 CUDA cores, ships with a base clock of 1024 megahertz, has a boost of 1188 megahertz, and it's got, I have to look at my paper here, 48 TMUs, so much the same as the other GM206 products, but the difference here is that it's been toned down a little bit for the GTX 950 video card. So this launch is a two gigabyte product on 128 bit memory interface. So that does sound small and it is to be fair, but it's not a linear comparison between Maxwell and Kepler in terms of the memory bandwidth because Nvidia has done a lot of optimizations on Maxwell. And this is something we've discussed in our GTX 980 reviews. And those optimizations mean that the CUDA cores are about 40% more efficient than on Kepler, and this efficiency is gained through optimizations like delta color compression, which looks at the delta of colors between frames, so temporally, and then it just determines the delta value to effectively print out for the new color rather than the absolute value. And that's all discussed in great depth in our GTX 980 review, so check that if you're curious about what that all means. But same deal here with the GTX 950, so the memory is a bit more efficient and the CUDA core is a bit more efficient than Kepler, but that does mean it struggles a bit in non-gaming tasks, but you're really not going to be using a GTX 950 in production tasks anyway. The GTX 950 is priced at $160 MSRP, but scales all the way up to $180 from what we're told for the pre-overclocked cards. This one, I believe, is priced at $170 for its pre-overclock and its Strix cooler, which is actually fairly quiet and efficient. It uses the same active idle cooling switch that we've seen in previous Strix models. So if it's not under heavy load, it'll just run idle and use the passive cooling for dissipation. That would be the heatsink. And the $160 price point puts the GTX 950 in a weird place competitively. It's basically priced against the R7 370, which is a few bucks cheaper. And the R7 370 is a video card we do not have, but we do have the R9 270X. And if you look at any benchmarks out there, they are effectively identical in performance. So we will be using those two, uh, or the, the 270X effectively as a stand-in. Obviously there's some differences there, but that's the best we've got. And the other priced items nearby would be the GTX 960 at a pretty massive $40 jump at $200 for two gigabytes or more for four gigabytes. The R9 380, which has replaced some of AMD's R200 cards is priced at $200. So again, fairly big jump from a GTX 950, which makes it an awkward transition into that next bracket. And then below the 950 is the GTX 750 Ti and the 130 to $140 price point. So really the, the main competition up at bat would be the R7 the 270X if you're replacing one of those. But otherwise you're looking at something like a 750 Ti or equivalent or a GTX 960, R9 380, something like that. The main technological advancement that NVIDIA is marketing for the GTX 950 is something that advances MOBA gaming. They basically have said that, look, MOBAs are a huge market right now, which is accurate. And they've said that the biggest item of concern to MOBA gamers that NVIDIA pulled was input latency. And that's something that we hear similarly from CSGO players, StarCraft players, uh, rest in peace and other games of that nature. So input latency is the delay be time, between the time you click the mouse or hit the keyboard input and the time that you see the impact in game. And normally for a lot of us gamers, it's so quick that it's really almost unnoticeable. For hyper competitive folks in the MOBA and RTS fields and competitive FPS fields, it actually is a noticeable factor. So NVIDIA has cited its GTX 650's performance metrics for input latency as the item to compare the GTX 950 against. And they've told us that the 650 had an input latency of about 80 milliseconds in Dota 2 against the GTX 950's 45 milliseconds. So quite a drop there, almost half. That's a 35 millisecond decline. And this is not something we can validate right now or test on other devices. It's something that I'd love to do in the near future and hope to do after PAX, but it basically requires a middle hardware solution. So an Arduino computer or something like that sitting in between your input device and your game. 
and that can measure the, the latency between delivery of the actual input. That is something we'll be working on in the future, but basically that's the gist of what NVIDIA has said is improved this time around, and that is something that will be pushed out through GeForce Experience in short order. So the way this works is pretty interesting. If you're into graphics and pipelines, NVIDIA's primary changes have been to the graphics pipeline, which is what you're looking at here. The graphics pipeline is named appropriately because without the previous items in the pipe clearing, production basically is halted, and the pipeline is limited by the slowest phase, which in this case is generally the GP render. That's when the longest pull is in the pipeline. And if you look at this closely, you'll see the game engine passes its frames to the API, which in this case is DirectX 11 or 12, and then DirectX has to continue advancing the frame render from there. So once DirectX is done with the frame, it passes that frame to the GPU for a final pass and render work, which then sends the frame to the screen. You've probably seen the word pre-buffered frames before in some games. This is something we've talked about, I think, with maybe Titanfall. And pre-buffered frames is basically how many frames the GPU sits in a buffer before progressing in the pipeline. It's often two for a lot of games, but you can get away with just one pre-buffered frame in games like Dota, League of Legends, and Heroes of the Storm, which are the three games that Nvidia has advertised as having the reduced input latency for the GTX 950. And removing the second in-flight frame, the second pre-buffered frame, from the pipeline is what allows NVIDIA to decrease its input latency without sacrificing gameplay or visuals. Some games do actually need multiple pre-buffered frames. Far Cry 4 is a good example where it increases the smoothness and performance of your gaming experience, so you really don't want to sacrifice that second frame in the buffer. But for Dota, LoL, and Heroes of the Storm, it's not really necessary, it doesn't detract from the experience. In fact, it detracts negatively to have the second pre-buffer frame because you're increasing the input latency. This much is fact and we are certain of. So removing the pre-buffered frame from the pipe is what gives the latency advantage here, but that's only in three games. It's only in the MOBAs. You're not gonna see that anywhere else. You're not gonna see it where it's detrimental. So it's a pretty limited and niche marketing option here for the GTX 950. Let's just jump straight into the gaming benchmarks here and see what this card's all about. CSGO and Dota 2 are both a non-issue for high FPS, high settings gaming with the GTX 950. You can easily hit more than 100 FPS with settings tuning in both games. And it should be noted that both of these games are playable on APUs and on some IGPs, depending on your settings. So being able to play on a 950 isn't necessarily profound but it is a more capable solution than the IGPs and APUs, obviously. Moving on to other games, with Grid Autosport, the game is perfectly playable at 1080p Ultra with maxed out lighting and ambient occlusion, landing the GTX 950 at about 67 FPS on average, and the GTX 950 retains fluidity with frame delivery in its high 1% and 0.1% low metrics, so it's actually got pretty high numbers for the 1% and 0.1% frame times. With Grid, we see the GTX 950 falling noticeably behind the GTX 960 with a 15% performance differential for the 40 or so dollar difference in price. And the R9 380 holds only a 4.3% advantage over the GTX 950. The GTX 950 pulls ahead of the GTX 750 Ti by 25%, which is a pretty massive difference. And that's the difference between playing below 60 FPS or over 60 FPS. So actually a pretty big jump there if you can afford the price difference, but we'll talk about whether that's worth it or not in a moment. Looking at Far Cry 4, you really need to dip to medium settings or similar to play Far Cry 4 on the GTX 950 because at our normal 1080p Ultra configuration, it just can't keep up with other devices or with the game for that matter. And that's because it's sort of a weird mid-range, but sort of budget card. The GTX 950 struggles to play GTA 5 at our very high and high test configuration, which basically sets the game to its maximum settings minus the advanced graphics settings. And the 950 pushed 47 FPS average against the 960's 52, the R9 285's 55, and the R9 380's 57. When switching to high settings, which is a drop in settings output, we see the GTX 950 pull into the range of 74 FPS with, again, very high 1% and 0.1% frame time metrics. 
So that actually makes the GTX 950 faster than the R9 285 and GTA 5 with high settings, despite a slowdown at very high. The GTX 950 is 6.5-ish percent slower than the GTX 960 in GTA 5 at high, and 5.2% slower than the R9 380. Metro is another game where the GTX 950 struggles to keep up at very high and high, requiring a dip closer to medium to keep up with the game, and the 950 runs 14% slower than the GTX 960, 20% slower than the R9 380 and R9 285, and runs faster than the R9 270X by 9%, which if you remember, the 270X is about equivalent to an R7 370. There's normally a couple of frames increase, one or two at this range, but that's about it. Mordor, Shadow of Mordor, is unplayable at Ultra, but we see a climb to 65 FPS at medium, making the GTX 950 reasonable if you're okay with dropping the settings a little bit. And note that the GTX 950 outperforms the 270X just about everywhere, which is where the R7 370 lands, so that does make it a competitive offering. Moving on to thermals and wattage, keep in mind that thermals will vary depending upon the manufacturer, so we've got an Asus Strix here. The GTX 950 Strix sits at 43.93 Celsius when using automatic fan settings, and that's plenty cool. It's a non-issue for gaming, and really anything in this range will work well. This is Delta T over ambient, so you're going to be closer to 60 Celsius if you have a 74 degree Fahrenheit house, and 60 Celsius really is very acceptable for a gaming video card when under 100% load. Looking at the wattage, we see power draw peak system load it sits at 199 watts, and this is a measurement of what the entire system draws when under full load on the CPU and GPU. So it's not just the video card, it's everything. And that means that you can get away with about a 300-350 watt power supply, depending on your CPU, memory, and drive configuration. If you're running something a little bit lower end than the 4790K, a 350 watt power supply, 300 watt power supply even, would get by just fine. Those are obviously a little, little hard to find. Most manufacturers don't make them that small, but you get the idea. This is just barely below the GTX 960, which has a higher 120 watt TDP, and 60 watts below the competing R9 380 solution. The GTX 950 is a good card, but it sits at an awkward price point at $160. Those with a more aggressive budget would be better looking at the GTX 750 Ti or similar. And those with a larger budget would be better looking into the GTX 960, the R9 380, or similar options. And the difference here between the 950 and the 960 or the R9 380 is actually pretty substantial in a lot of games. It is the difference between lowering your settings and not doing that. So if you are one of those players who does not like to sacrifice graphics very much, if at all, then you really do want to increase your budget by about $40, maybe a little more than that and get something higher end. If you care less about going from ultra or very high down to medium, and you just care about being able to play your game affordably, the GTX 950 is not a bad solution. In fact, it's pretty good. Its only direct competition is the R7 370, which is effectively identical to the R9 270X in terms of performance. There's a slight gain, but not much. And the GTX 950 does outperform that solution in all the tests we ran and it's a better performer thermally and in terms of wattage, depending on which manufacturer you get for the thermals. So that does make the GTX 950 something we choose over the R7 370, but again, this is an awkward price point. So it's rare that in the type of build I recommend, I would venture in this area to begin with, because I'm normally looking at a budgeted 750 Ti or a higher end R9 380, GTX 960 or equivalent. For those who do happen to fall into this price category, this is not a bad video card. It is something that we can confidently recommend in terms of driver support and function in games. Just keep in mind, you will have to sacrifice some of your settings for the AAA titles. For games like MOBAs, for Dota 2, League of Legends, and Heroes of the Storm in particular, or future games like Overwatch, you can actually expect very good performance with this. It will run those just fine at max settings or near max. We're not 100% sure how Overwatch will be yet. And then for the MOBAs in the, the listing I just gave you, Dota, LOL, and HOT, the latency advantage here is actually supposed to be somewhat significant depending on how hyper-competitive you are. So if you're a very competitive gamer, you will notice a latency advantage 
with the newer Maxwell cards. This is something that my understanding is will be pushed throughout the platform. So it'll be distributed through GeForce Experience. That means that if you already own a higher end card, it's not like you're going to need to downgrade to a GTX 950 to get that input latency advantage. So that is something to keep in mind here. It is being co-marketed with the 950, but is not necessarily mutually exclusive with it, if that makes sense. So that is the GTX 950. That's all we have to say really about the ASUS Strix model of the card. Check out the article in the description below for the full review. If you want to see the text, the charts, and the drill down of the architecture. And of course, if you like our coverage, please look into our Patreon page. It's linked in the post, post roll video. Big thanks to the eight of you so far who have supported us there. So we're starting small, but it is a big help to get the Patreon backers because it lets us move away from traditional advertising and hopefully diminish the ads on the site as well. So that's all for now. I will see you all next time. Peace.